Greetings to all of you attending the fourth Eternal Conclave uh, 2020. Greetings from uh, Samir Mehta from Miami, Florida. It is uh, indeed a pity that uh, the COVID episode uh, has uh, disrupted so many things in life, including uh, educational endeavors. But uh, knowing how well uh, uh, Mr. Nitesh Tiwari and his team have uh, plan this meeting, I think you'll have a wonderful educational experience. Now, in the middle of the COVID crisis, the world is realizing the power of telemedicine. If you are in the United States, uh, almost every day you will see evidence of it uh, with the single individual institution, in individuals and institutions uh, jumping into telemedicine. To the Lumen Foundation, uh, telemedicine is not new. In fact, uh, this is what we had done in 2015. And not only at Eternal Heart did we plan the best and the biggest telemedicine guided STEMI network and program, I think uh, it has had a halo effect uh, on parts of the country and even parts of the world. Now, the Rahat uh, Telemedicine Program, uh, spearheaded uh, by Dr. Uh, Sharma, I'll, I'll actually go back uh, to all the, uh, to both the Sharmas in this uh, uh, context in a moment. But uh, the program was conceived as the, the, the best and the biggest. It is definitely the best. And hopefully with time, it will also become uh, biggest as uh, the program is expanded beyond Jaipur into other uh, parts of uh, Rajasthan. Uh, once again, uh, almost 65 million people uh, can be networked uh, with the power of uh, uh, telemedicine, all being guided out of the command center at uh, uh, Eternal Heart Hospital. Now, there are three people I need to thank uh, in this endeavor. Uh, foremost, uh, Dr. Samin Sharma, my friend and uh, colleague uh, since the last uh, 35 years when we trained together uh, uh, in New York. Uh, it was his vision. Uh, he had seen the work of Lumen Foundation uh, around the world, and he continued uh, encouraging uh, me to create. Uh, and uh, what you find with the Rahat uh, telemedicine program is uh, the most innovative, the best telemedicine application, and the most cost-effective model in the world. And probably the credit for its launch, its dissemination, its functioning, night after night, the effort which is being put in goes mainly to Dr. Sanjeev Sharma. He has spearheaded the program. He has expanded it. He has seen the power and he has used it to save lives of hundreds of people in Rajasthan and those of uh, uh, Jaipur in particular. And I think the, pro the program is going to become a beacon for uh, several similar initiatives, both nationally and globally. Uh, my thanks also to Dr. Uh, to Mrs. Vasundra Rajay, who had uh, seen the vision of this program as early as in 2015. My last comments uh, go to thank uh, Mrs. Manju Sharma, the, the managing uh, director and the CEO of uh, uh, Eternal Hospital. Why do I say it? Because you need a person of such vision to believe in the power of the program and to launch all the availabilities, the personnel, the skills, the ED, the ambulances, as well as to make availability 24 seven for creating and managing this program to save lives. It is the visions of the administration, which is so critical. And to Manju, I, I thank her for joining us in this uh, remarkable journey. She has also launched a, a very powerful uh, educational campaign, uh, as well as initiatives, uh, which take the program uh, around uh, the city and around the state to educate the patient, both regarding the awareness of heart attacks, its treatment, and the possibilities. Let me now take, uh, take you around uh, and share with you the work of the Lumen Foundation. It has been almost uh, 15 years that we have been involved in creating uh, STEMI initiatives, uh, many using telemedicine. This is a recent presentation I made at the American College of Cardiology, the Latin telemedicine program with 100 million patient population coverage in four countries in Brazil, Colombia, Argentina, and uh, Chile. 
and uh, how this program uh, has been networked uh, as uh, i mentioned in my opening statement as the world is now realizing to the powers of telemedicine we figured out that to increase access to quality STEMI management, there is nothing more effective than uh, telemedicine. And slowly and steadily, a scientifically guided protocol has been taken through 275 centers in four countries, all being guided by telemedicine and helping manage 100 million patients. How does it become possible? This is again the protocol from Wallace's pharmacoinvasive management, primary PCI, all guided by a scientific program unchanged since the last 12 years and managed solely through telemedicine. This is what I call a navigational path of uh, Latin. This is as an example in Brazil, uh, almost uh, 29 cities in this vast country, three times the size of India. Uh, hub and spoke uh, pattern, uh, the patients are seen at a spoke and they are navigated onto a hub guided through telemedicine based on the patient's onset of symptoms and the distance from the uh, between the hub and the spoke all sorts of uh, if you take a look at the navigational pathway this tells you exactly what is the center able to do what is the capability of the spoke what is the distance to the hub what kind of an ambulance structure is needed what telemedicine strategy is going to be recommended the total number of patients seen through the telemedicine encounter, the STEMI diagnosed and the STEMI treated slowly and steadily, month after month, this kind of an initiative was built, starting in Colombia, then taken to Brazil. You must understand there were tremendous variations when you are trying to create an international, a global template. As an example, uh, Brazil, the challenges were uh, such a massive country, having some issues, uh, regarding the geographical distance. For Colombia, the challenges were totally different. Uh, there were issues of uh, different terrain, uh, mountainous regions, personal safety. Mexico also provided some challenges. We've got 81 centers, but with partnership with national societies there, the task became easier. And again, uh, in Argentina, almost all of these gains were put into action. Now, various innovations have been created by the Latin medicine uh, program. I create, consider this the most effective. And this is also what we have used in the Rahat program, the time to telemedicine diagnosis. From the moment the EKG has been obtained to creating a diagnosis, used to take us almost 25 uh, minutes when we created the program. This is down to 3.5 minutes now. That, not, that is not only the only good news, this is what happens. That the time to telemedicine diagnosis, here is a slide which shows you the breakdown into two models. We had two models that uh, both the hub and the spokes and the command centers were located in the country. This happened in Colombia and in Brazil, where the diagnosis, the management and the guidance was obtained within the country. Time to telemedicine diagnosis was 3.5 minutes. Once again, this means the EKG is taken, it is put on the cloud, it is downloaded at the site at the command center, the artifacts are removed, it goes through a triage of urgency, most of these have a mandate to be answered within two minutes, the cardiologist on call is sought, he takes a look, he makes a diagnosis and issues three alerts, all of this is done in 3.5 minutes. Now. This is not only the, the power of telemedicine, let's show you something else. All the 81 centers in Mexico were guided through command center in Bogota, Colombia, which basically demonstrates to you that there are no boundaries so far as telemedicine is concerned. How much was the time to telemedicine diagnosis for within the country? 3.5 minutes. How much was it from outside the country? The same 3.5 minutes. There are no boundaries. If you want to provide AMI guidance to vast populations in large areas, exactly what Rahat is trying to do, time to telemedicine diagnosis can be bought systematically down. It is one of the best parameters uh, and there are several publications coming from the Lumen Foundation discussing this. 
Now, these are some of the details how the program has been uh, in Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, and Argentina. Their various uh, door to balloon times, the STEMI rates. When the program was started, as an example in Colombia, 76% of the patients were either getting no treatment or thrombolysis, and they were coming about six hours after symptoms. Now, 78% of the patients are being transported by ambulance, and almost all of them get treated by primary PCI. It has to be cost effective. Uh, this is again uh, a paper which has been published uh, uh, at the ESC demonstrating the cost effectiveness. Now, how do you compare a behemoth program like Latin with almost 1 million telemedicine encounters? How do you compare with something? So this is the best comparator with the, a program in the United States, which had only 9,000 patients. And here you realize that uh, the power of uh, saving uh, not only lives, uh, but money, that almost $119 million were saved with creating and just by avoiding unnecessary transfer of these patients for treatment. This is a much larger uh, fiscal uh, uh, power uh, slide, uh, which we prepared uh, demonstrating uh, the economic uh, forecasting of Latin, taking it even into 2026, when almost uh, 5 million patients, 30,000 STEMI could be treated, having a $281 million cost. What do these two slides demonstrate? Not only are you able to treat massive populations with telemedicine, you are also able to do it cost effectively. So what is the rel relevance of uh, Latin? I think uh, uh, three ways. It provides a global template of AMI management. Uh, the Lumen Foundation started Latin almost 12 years ago. And what is the global template? The Rahat program, which will probably save more lives at least as many, if not more than the Latin program. And once again, my congratulations to Dr. Samin Sharma, to Dr. Sanjeev Sharma for spearheading a fantastic program for uh, Rajasthan and for India. I also believe that uh, Latin and the power of telemedicine can be similarly applied for programs which are uh, for medical conditions which have uh, similar mandates of uh, time. And a perfect example of that is stroke and we'll show you how Latin is now being expanded to include stroke. What is the final frontier? The final frontier in medicine, I think, truly leads to all the doors lead to artificial intelligence. And we'll share with you in a moment the work of Cardionomus so that the patient can diagnose his own STEMI and make a difference in the symptom to balloon rather than just the focus on door to balloon. So here is a global template. Uh, uh, in addition to Rahat, let me show you what else we did. Uh, this is Mexico, where we partnered with the Society of uh, Medicine uh, Interventional Cardiology and created the program Codigo Infarto and a partnership between uh, Latin and Sosime. I think the same is possible with Rahat by partnering with the Cardiology Society of India and various other organizations. You need broad stakeholders. In the case of uh, Mexico, Latin provided the logistics of how the program was done. So CIME, the National Society, provided the educational and awareness campaign. This is Latin plus stroke. We are already converting some of the Latin sites to also do stroke management. As far as I'm concerned, I can tell you stroke management today is exactly where STEMI used to be five years or maybe 10 years ago. And all the lessons which we are trying to do at the stroke and the comprehensive stroke center, including management of uh, thrombotic strokes, we are basically using the lessons which we have learned with the management of AMI. And I think Latin, with its power, with the demonstration of the abilities of telemedicine, can also guide the management of stroke. Finally, to artificial intelligence, and I think this is a very, very large area, I firmly believe that artificial intelligence will fundamentally deconstruct forever the STEMI, both the process and the procedure. The prediction modeling capabilities of artificial intelligence will reliably forecast STEMI, and they will also help us monitor and manage optimal STEMI care 
at various levels. These levels could be at the level of the individual community, the state, national, and even international. As an example, the Rahat program, just about every aspect of it can be guided by prediction modeling and all sorts of outcomes can be derived from that in a very reliable and predictable fashion. I also believe that the biggest contribution of artificial intelligence will be to change the focus. For too long, I think we have squandered our time and resources in AMI management, focusing with the important, but I think an obsolete parameter of door to balloon time. What is the point? And again, I, I relate this to my own experience of performing a STEMI only practice for 21 years, all I have done is uh, perform STEMI night after night. What is the point of the team speeding at 100 miles an hour at three in the night when the patient was having chest pain for six hours? I think door to balloon time was important initially. Now it is time for us to focus on the symptoms. I think the right parameter is symptom to balloon time. We simply have to create tools so that the diagnosis can be made easy so that the patient is able to access care easy. And towards that, uh, uh, I have uh, my own uh, individual uh, endeavor. It's uh, an aspect uh, which we hope to get uh, European uh, approval any day. And the FDA approval and the trials are even uh, being uh, planned. Uh, this is the cardionomous single lead AI. It's the first clinical tool for a self-administered STEMI diagnosis by the patient itself and a rational mechanism, how I think we can make a difference in the symptom to balloon time. That to me is the final parameter. It is time to move away from the door to balloon time. And uh, this particular tool using artificial intelligence uh, hopefully will be commercially available and uh, demonstrate the scientific suitability of applying artificial intelligence. Here are some of the ways how the Lumen Foundation uh, is now using uh, the experience with Latin and artificial intelligence to create AI guided protocols. These are some of the papers we have recently produced uh, and uh, presented. This is uh, from uh, the August uh, ESC 2020 meeting. A physician free population based STEMI plus stroke management performed with telemedicine showing you the power of telemedicine, how it is able to guide and manage different conditions. This is taking further applying telemedicine and incorporating artificial intelligence, all of it making a difference in creating what I described before is a heart attack detector, the cardionomous single lead AI device, the world's best device, the first device available using a single lead in this particular case, the V2, for uh, uh, almost a 97% uh, accuracy in picking up STEMI intervention. It is possible now to apply it in, uh, in a watch. We already have models uh, connecting it with the Apple Watch. Uh, it can be done as a ring, uh, a heart attack uh, diagnostic ring. It can be put as a patch on the chest. And I'm sure this will contribute to making a difference in AI and the STEMI management. Uh, this is how the AI work and the algorithms have been used to create a first self-administered single lead AI guided STEMI detection. Uh, uh, this is in the form of a ring. Uh, I recently presented uh, this paper at uh, the TCT Connect meeting two weeks ago. So all of this, where exactly is this going? Uh, what is the future? What is the relevance of our work and the work of the Lumen Foundation? These are my conclusions. Uh, I believe that Rahat today is India's top STEMI initiative and the Eternal Hospital in Jaipur is possibly and probably in my humble opinion, the best place in the country for STEMI care. Why do I say this? It is not only the Rahat program. I have personally watched, guided, seen the research training and publication protocols involved and uh, 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 brought forth uh, with this initiative with system-wide improvements, involvement of the administration, multiple building of stakeholders, the quality educational and uh, awareness initiatives, 
and not only is rahat saving lives each day and once again my 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 congratulations to to dr sanjeev sharma for making it possible night after night not only is rahat saving lives it has also created a halo effect and it is contributing to improving stemi care in the country beyond this i think uh, telemedicine as has been demonstrated with latin offers a cost effective program and a template for improving global telemedicine global uh, ami uh, improvements and uh, uh, saving of lives uh, from heart attacks the latin telemedicine program i think uh, can provide a template most of them for poor regions of africa middle east southeast asia and of course uh, the rahat program is a direct uh, uh, follow up uh, from the lessons learned from latin i also believe that telemedicine can yield uh, both strategies uh, helping both the world's first and the second biggest killer which is stemi and stroke and latin uh, is already implementing some of these protocols and finally i think it is time for us to look beyond the next region the next 10 years should be focused on not only the door to balloon time i think they should focus on symptom to balloon time and i truly believe that the difference in this is going to be made with the incorporation of uh, artificial intelligence and already we have created a patient's self directed methodology how stemi can be directed early and the protocol begin i hope uh, uh, this presentation has been useful for you and uh, i wish you all good luck uh, in your uh, efforts to save lives uh, during the covid crisis it has been a pleasure affiliating uh, the lumen foundation with eternal heart and i send my best wishes to the team